Hello, Alexander Wolf here, CEO of New Ray Media. In this episode of the New Ray Media Show, we're going to take a look at the packaging of some incredible CPG brands and learn what makes a good package and, in contrast, a bad package. We're going to be looking at several points that help us critique these product packages. Functionality, practicality, design, storytelling, consistency, and finally, innovation. So stay tuned because this is going to be a fun one. I promise you that. All right, for our first topic, we're going to be looking at functionality and practicality. And for that, we're going to visit Hanes' classic ketchup bottle. Hanes introduced tomato ketchup uh, to his product range around 1876. Wow, long time ago. The packaging stayed the same for more than a century. There was no need to change it. Why change something that was working? It was fulfilling its function, so it stayed the same. At a point, Hanes wanted to understand how the, uh, their product was being consumed at home. That's when they commissioned a research team to visit family homes, observe what mom and dad and the kids did in the dinner table and around the house. What were some of the insights that they found here? They saw that kids weren't allowed to use a ketchup bottle by themselves. It was a task deemed only for the adults. I mean, it's glass, it's heavy, it's just a disaster waiting to happen, right? A typical five-year-old consumed about 60% more ketchup than a typical 40 year old. So who is your end consumer there? Uh, researchers could see that products, biggest consumers didn't have direct access to the product. So the limiting of the consumption levels were huge. The solution here, the packaging team focused on creating a product that improved its usability. They came up with the classic easy squirt bottle. It was much lighter for kids and anybody to hold and ketchup came out with it with much, much less effort. By the 90s, uh, user research found that it was still troublesome to get the ketchup out of the plastic bottle. And to combat these problems, yeah, users often uh, stored the ketchup upside down in their fridge. Again, another solution here. Haynes took that user insight and turned that problem into a solution. And the upside down uh, EC Squirt bottle was born. It helped consumers get the product quicker and with less of a mess when opening the bottle. Design takeaways that we should take from this. Haynes redesigned this product based on user research. Design decisions should always, or as far as you can, be based on user research. The new design was successful because it solved a genuine problem. Great design usually solves real problems. So let's not forget that. This is a great example of product usability and functionality. Uh, good packaging design is just not about the appearance. It can be with that, about that, but it has got to be usable, practical. Our second point here, we're going to be visiting the Kikkoman soy sauce bottle. This is going to represent functionality and practicality for us. How is that? A little backstory. The Kikkoman soy sauce uh, bottle was created by renowned Japanese designer uh, Kenji Ikwan and was first introduced in 1961. In the 1950s, soy sauce was being sold by one liter bottles for small families. So just imagine a liter bottle of soy sauce and having to pour that out. This obviously made pouring very difficult. Equan himself recalls memories of his mother pouring soy sauce, two liter bottles of soy sauce into smaller containers, just so it was a little more practical. Imagine the steps and the hoops you had to jump through to be able to use that soy sauce on your food, just huge and very impractical. Traditional dispensers were unable to prevent the soy sauce from dripping out or the spout after each use. So a mess obviously there were happening. Here we have a problem and an opportunity as well. Equan took this opportunity into his own hands and designed a perfectly shaped pourer for the precise and clean dispensing of small quantities, even a single drop of soy sauce without any extra drips that unwanted. As a result, he created an aesthetically pleasing bottle that is both a practical cooking aid and a decorative tabletop condiment. It was also reusable thanks to a screw off cap and it was dishwasher friendly. So just think about the practicalities compared to what was, they were using before. Now, why is this such good packaging? The bottle has a very aesthetically pleasing look 
with a minimalistic and elegant design featuring a curved silhouette and an unobtrusive lettering, unobtrusive lettering, excuse me, perfectly embodied the Japanese culture of minimalist design and functionality. The Kikkoman bottle is considered such an icon of form and functionality that is now part of the Museum of Modern Art. But let's summar summarize what we need to take away from this. Here we see again examples of user experience, what people go through when they take home that product that you're selling and how they live with it, how they interact with it. That's very important and it's fundamental. You can have some cool designs of the packaging, flashy colors, all that stuff that get you attention. But if people are having bad experiences using your product, like for example, those plastic cake containers uh, of the, when you're trying to open them and pull them out, they're so scratchy sometimes. I remember uh, they have caught me in the middle of the night trying to eat some cake and making the whole house rumble. I I hate those packages with a passion. Just think about this. Next time that somebody, a consumer sees your product in the shelf, in the grocery store, they're gonna remember those feelings that they had last time they interacted with your product at home. And that could be the point where they decide to go with a competitor and you don't want that. Our third point here is gonna be uh, held by Morton Salt. And it's gonna introduce us to storytelling, design, consistency, and innovation. So let's walk back to another historic packaging problem and solution here. Prior to the 1900s, people had a real problem with clumping salt. Heck, we still have it some going on and we all hate it when our salt is all clumpy. When the humidity was high or it was raining outside, their salt back then was just clumping together and it was just a disgusting mess. It was a huge issue, so big that Morton Salt went back to work to try to fix this problem and devised a new free-flowing salt that uh, promised one not to clump even on a rainy day and it worked. truly thinking outside the box, the designers at Morton's decided to package their free-flowing salt in a cylindrical shape container. So, you know, the audacity. Oh my gosh, the huh? audacity. They even put a little spout on the top to allow for easy pouring to reinforce the idea that their brand of salt was pourable. Huge innovation back then. They even patented this spout. They were so sure about their differential that they based their entire product around this function. That's when the famous Morton Salt Girl was born. It's a little girl holding an umbrella in one hand, keeping the rain away, and in the other hand, a tilted Morton can uh, so showing that the salt is freely flowing is followed by the slogan, when it rains, it pours. It's a whole story in one single picture. It's depicting several pain points that the consumers have. The moisture clumping the salt, that's why it's raining and the umbrella, and then showing how freely the salt flows right out of their little spout. It's just genius work because for back then in that time, it was a huge issue and they didn't have to have a commercial just right there walking in the aisles and they see that illustration. It kind of solves problems that they already had. It's just an instinct. They're trying to buy that product. So the packaging, the product, the slogan, and branding, it all tells a story. Morton has now recently redesigned its entire portfolio. Look, Morton sells products in multiple categories to maintain brand consistency. Morton has a design system that features consistent elements that identify products as Morton, yet enough variance to allow each individual product to have its own personality. Being the first time that the brand has retooled its look or re-engineered its look since 2014. Its new look maintains the iconic Morton Salt Girl, but also incorporates bolder colors and updated typography because the brand hopes that it will appear to younger shoppers, right? You can't use nostalgia for everybody. The end result is more modern, premium, and cohesive look across the culinary and home care lines and that will help more and stand out in stores and in the digital shelf as told by Dennis Lauer, chief marketing officer of uh, Morton Salt. Some of the packaging also features QR codes that consumers can scan and access recipes, cooking tips, and an actually an augmented reality experience. This augmented reality experience includes 
opportunities to interact with uh, Martin, the Morton Salt Girl. So I hope those are PG experiences. What we, why we care about this story? Uh, why is this such good packaging? Since the first package design, Morton has great storytelling across their branding and, and a very functional and innovative packaging. They're hoping to engage a newer audience as well as keeping the old generation still buying. They're kind of trying to play both sides. So let's, we'll see how that help, that actually works. And if they can start getting new clients and new younger uh, generations buying their product. Our fourth and weirdest point here is we're going to be checking out the Pringles can and that's going to represent function and practicality. The idea of the Pringles can, canister let's call it, was first invented by the, the chemist Frederick Bauer in 1966. Because potato chips are fragile, Bauer felt that simply tossing them in a plastic bag was an inefficient method of storage. By putting the potato chips in a canister, Pringles could offer their customers a unique brand promise that their snacks would be completely uniform and would not be broken. Fresh and unbroken in a crush-proof canister. <laughs> Despite early hesitance from consumers, Pringles found success, let's say by the 80s. You know, this Pringles guy should be taken seriously. This is a fun fact. Federick was so proud of his invention that he insisted of being buried in a human-sized Pringle can. And when he died in 2008, his family honored his wishes. So, I mean, it is your final wishes, so why not? What should we take away from this? Pringle's unique packaging doesn't succeed just because it's a novelty, right? A different shape, so let's buy the new thing. Rather, it serves as a real purpose to make the product better and it helps the brand live up to its promise of being uniform chips that are not gonna be broken and all crummy inside. And they do that up to now, like you could say most, that's like 90% of Pringles aren't broken. We are just about done this episode, so hang tight because this bonus round, we're gonna see five great examples of graphic designs and packaging. We'll start off by introducing conspiracy roasters. Roasters? Roasters, because it's a coffee. This is a great example of storytelling in design and another one of a design based on a concept. It's clearly riffing off the mad ideas uh, spreading around the internet right now about the aliens in Area 51, to the notion that the earth is actually flat. So they're combining wrapped typography and a clever pictorial logo to bring the concept to life. The result is a monochrome masterpiece, really. You can't fail but put a smile on your face. Like, just look at it. It's very creative. It reminds me of the old, or even new, old because that's when I used to eat cereal, but the back of the cereals where it has the crossword puzzles or something to keep you entertained. That's what it makes me, it reminds me of. Our second example of graphic design, cool graphic design is the co-op alcohol range. This brand wanted to differentiate itself while maintaining their brand identity. So they have multiple products and they want to be different, but they want to look like they belong to the same company. What they achieved is a great example of individuality yet cohesiveness. The co-op uh, retail chain isn't especially known for its beers and ciders and spirits, but they didn't want uh, the public to perceive them as a second best. So they turned to robot food to create a hero brand that celebrates the individuality of each product, but in an electric but cohesive collection, if we can call it that. A fixed color palette of blue, white, black and silver. They used expressive typography, impactful graphics, then created a distinctive look for each product, from their vodka to their wheat beer. I think they're, it looks clean, it looks attractive, not too flashy, uh, I think it looks nice. All right, our next and third point here for graphic design is Milgrad, uh, the perfect example of a design made to stand out on a shelf. Like, look at this, that's all, this is just so cool. Knowing that the dairy market occupies more than 22% of the FMCG food product structure, the design aims to stand out on the dairy shelf, increase sales, and expand the geography of the representation and distribution channels, while showcasing a humorous, kind, and sweet response. This is the result, a blue cat that travels throughout the package, creating different narratives as the user rotates the package. 
To be honest, to me, it makes me think like you're buying cat's milk, but I mean, I guess in some countries, you drink what you got, you know? Let's move on here. All right, our next example here is Dalton's drinks. The nostalgia, it's always this factor. You are always gonna think back uh, into the sweet old days and your memory is gonna be very selective and the past is always gonna be seem, uh, seem sweeter than it was. Wish we could turn back time. Marketing agencies, brands, everybody kinda exploits that. And here's another example. The launch by Dalton in 2012 as a reaction of Coca-Cola's domination in the, the London Olympics. Dalton's calls itself soda with integrity. They're combining its original Big D brand identity with a graphic style that reflects both its East London origins and the retro vibes beloved by the young hipsters out there. Each flavor is a music player themed and it features callbacks as boomboxes, turntables, a top of hi-fi component, cassette tapes. I think it's, it's flashy, it catches your eye, and I guess it takes a little bit of nostalgia and it might be enough for you to try the new product and hopefully the flavors are good enough to keep coming back for, the, for more. Our last example of our speed round here that's not being so speedy. Uh, this is not only another example of the nostalgia factor, but also one of the updating to modern times in an era where most of our interactions are through a screen, you know? John Snow's Richie, the design agency, made sure that everything looked good and tasty. So JKR took us back to the 70s, and you can tell by this design, just screams out 70s with the kind of burger logo that made the food look good back then. And they created iconic t-shirts, Okay, insignias aside, even the packaging assets shine with the new proprietary flame typeface. They created a new type of lettering. That lettering takes inspiration from the shapes of their food as it genuinely looks like a retro fun when you tear into the, the Whopper. The biggest thing the king of burgers wanted out of their refresh was not only to look better on a screen, like I said, that's the main way we interact with brands these days. But to make the ingredients pop with gorgeous illustrations and virtually you can taste everything. And it's, it's very cool, it's very sleek, it's, it's not too busy. See what yourself, I, I think it's pretty cool, branding. Let's just recap the show because it's been a long one here. We saw how we can develop a brand on a story or a concept. This is also the approach that we took from Phoenix for, for Phoenix Bites, the beef jerky brand that we're developing from scratch. But uh, that'll be just another video. We won't get into it now. So each product can have its own identity to stand out, but it's better if despite the individuality, the product displays a brand unity and feels cohesive with its family products. So let's not create everything from scratch for each product. It still has to be, feel like it's coming from somewhere and it's being part of the brand. Not a huge one, it's nostalgia and we know it. We're being milked from, from every which way we turn. People are trying to use nostalgia to get us. We'll always be attractive to it. It's, it's not a bad thing, but only a certain group really is into nostalgia and this is a very useful resource when you really understand your niche and you know what's nostalgic to them. We all think about the past and we all think, oh, we wish we could live, relive a certain time of our, our lives. If you really know your buying personas or your consumer niche, uh, you can use nostalgia for your own good. So it seems their, pack, their packaging is more attractive to them. Standing out on the shelf is one of the best qualities a product could have if you're gonna be in, in shelves. And this could be a decisive factor at the moment of a purchase. Our very last point here, we'll wrap it up. Update to digital. Take in mind that everybody is looking through a phone now. Make it look good on a screen. It's not all about the grocery store. You might not even be selling your product in a grocery store. So put everything and look at everything through the eyes of your consumer and how they're gonna be looking at your product, where they're gonna be finding your product, and does your, your packaging stand out through a phone, a laptop, a poster. Make sure that you create those examples and you look at them and you put them to the test. All right, that's it. I, I think I've talked enough. I hope this episode helped you along your package design journey as much as it did us putting all this together because it was full of great information. So now all you have to do is get to designing your new package. 
So good luck. Mm -hmm.